Something is watching us from the darkness between the stars, and the evidence has been hiding in plain sight for thousands of years. While we scan the cosmos, desperately searching for alien life, what if they've been here all along, following strict rules never to interfere? Ancient texts speak of watchers from the sky. Unexplained technologies appear throughout history and their planet sits in what scientists call a suspiciously quiet corner of space. We are about to explore the zoo hypothesis, examine impossible archaeological discoveries, investigate the mathematical probability of galactic civilizations, and uncover why first contact might be intentionally delayed. Please like and subscribe because this journey will change how you see our place in the universe. Prepare yourselves. We begin. Music. Every night, 200 billion stars burn across our galaxy alone. And yet, the universe remains deadly silent. For over 60 years, we've aimed our most powerful radio telescopes toward the heavens, listening for any whisper of intelligent life. We've scanned thousands of star systems, analyzed millions of signals, and searched through decades of cosmic noise. The result is always the same. Nothing. Complete radio silence from a galaxy that should be teeming with civilizations far older and more advanced than our own. Think about this mathematically. Our galaxy formed over 13 billion years ago. Earth is only four and a half billion years old, making us cosmic teenagers in galactic terms. Countless star systems had billions of years to develop life before our planet even existed. If just 1% of suitable planets developed intelligent life, and if just 1% of those civilizations survived long enough to send radio signals, we should detect hundreds of thousands of transmissions. Right now, the silence becomes even stranger when you consider technological growth rates. Human civilization went from horse-drawn carriages to space stations in less than 200 years. An alien species with just a thousand-year head start would possess technology that seems like magic to us. A civilization a million years older would be so advanced that their capabilities would be utterly incomprehensible. Yet we hear nothing at all. Scientists call this the Fermi Paradox named after physicist Enrio Fermi, who famously asked, where is everybody? The math demands that advanced civilizations should exist throughout our galaxy. The evidence suggests they simply don't. This contradiction has puzzled researchers for decades because both sides of the equation seem absolutely certain. Some scientists propose that intelligent life destroys itself before achieving interstellar communication. Others suggest that space travel between stars is impossible, keeping civilizations trapped on their home worlds. These explanations feel incomplete though because they require every single advanced species across billions of years to follow the exact same pattern of failure. Picture our galaxy as a vast city with millions of apartment buildings. According to our best calculations, thousands of those buildings should have lights on, music playing, and clear signs of life. Instead, we see only darkness and hear only silence from every single window. The emptiness feels deliberate, almost orchestrated. Radio waves travel at the speed of light, meaning signals from nearby star systems should reach us within years or decades. We've been listening since 1960, giving civilizations within 60 light years plenty of time to respond to our earliest broadcasts. That search radius includes thousands of star systems, many with planets in the habitable zone where liquid water can exist. The silence suggests three possibilities. Either we're completely alone in a galaxy of dead worlds, every civilization destroys itself before achieving radio technology, or something is preventing us from hearing what's really out there. But what if the silence itself is the answer? And we're living inside a carefully maintained bubble of cosmic quiet. Deep in the jungles of Peru, massive stone blocks weighing over 100 tons fit together so perfectly that you cannot slide a piece of paper between them. The ancient site of Sakwan contains walls built from stones so precisely cut and positioned that modern engineers struggle to understand how they were moved, let alone shaped with such accuracy. These aren't simple rectangular blocks. 
Each stone has multiple sides with complex angles that lock together like three-dimensional puzzle pieces. The joints between them create patterns so intricate that mapping them requires advanced computer software. Local legends claim these structures were built by giants who could move stones with their minds. Mainstream archaeology attributes them to the Inca civilization who supposedly used copper tools and wooden rollers to transport blocks weighing more than 60 cars combined. The Inca were master builders, but they had no iron tools, no wheels, and no written language to preserve engineering knowledge. Consider the logistics alone. Some stones at Saxwan originated from quarries 20 meters away across mountainous terrain. Moving a single 100-ton block today requires massive cranes, specialized trailers, and carefully planned routes on modern highways. The ancient builders somehow transported dozens of these megaliths across rough landscape using technology that archaeologists claim was more primitive than medieval European construction methods. The precision becomes even more mysterious when you examine the cutting techniques. Each stone surface is smooth as polished glass with corners so sharp they could cut paper. Creating such finishes on granite requires diamond tip tools and high-speed machinery. Copper chisels and stone hammers should leave rough surfaces with visible tool marks. Yet these ancient walls show none. Similar impossible stonework appears across the globe. At Baalbek in Lebanon, foundation stones weigh over 800 tons each. In Egypt, the Great Pyramid contains granite blocks quarried 500 miles away and positioned with astronomical precision. Easter Island statues weighing up to 80 tons somehow walked across the island according to local traditions. Each civilization left behind the same calling card. Massive stones moved impossible distances and fitted with supernatural precision. Then they all vanished, leaving no written records explaining their construction techniques. It's as if master builders appeared, created their monuments, and then deliberately erased themselves from history. Carbon dating and archaeological evidence suggest these sites were built by different cultures, separated by thousands of years and thousands of miles. Yet the construction techniques remain virtually identical. Ancient builders worldwide somehow independently discovered the same impossible methods for moving and shaping massive stones. Think of it like finding identical iPhones buried in medieval castles across different continents. The technology doesn't match the supposed capabilities of the builders. The mathematical precision extends beyond just heavy lifting. Many ancient sites align perfectly with star positions, solstices, and other astronomical events. Creating such alignments requires knowledge of complex mathematics and long-term celestial observation that supposedly didn't exist when these monuments were built. But what if these weren't primitive civilizations at all? and someone else entirely was guiding their impossible achievements. In 1886, Carl Benz invented the first practical automobile with a top speed of 10 miles per hour. And just 83 years later, humans walked on the moon. This represents the most explosive technological growth in recorded history. Think about the magnitude of this leap. In less than a single human lifetime, we went from horse-drawn carriages to rocket ships capable of escaping Earth's gravity. We progressed from candles and oil lamps to nuclear power plants. We advanced from handwritten letters to global instant communication networks spanning the entire planet. The timeline becomes even more staggering when you zoom in on specific breakthroughs. The Wright brothers achieved powered flight in 1903. Just 66 years later, Apollo 11 landed on lunar soil. That's barely enough time for two generations to pass. Yet, we somehow mastered atmospheric flight, jet propulsion, rocket engines, space navigation, life support systems, and interplanetary communication. Compare this to previous technological progress throughout human history. Agriculture took years to spread globally. The wheel was invented around 3,000, 500 BCC and remained virtually unchanged for over 5,000 years. Writing systems developed slowly over centuries with gradual improvements in materials and techniques. For most of human civilization, 
technological advancement crawled at a pace barely noticeable within individual lifetimes. A person born in 100 CE would die in a world using essentially identical tools, transportation, and communication methods. Meaningful changes required multiple centuries to take hold and spread between cultures. Then something shifted dramatically around 1750 and human progress exploded exponentially. The Industrial Revolution launched a cascade of innovations that accelerated with each decade. Steam engines led to railroads. Telegraph systems enabled rapid long-distance communication. Photography captured permanent images. Electricity illuminated cities and powered machinery. Each breakthrough seemed to trigger multiple follow-up discoveries, as if someone had suddenly unlocked a sequence of technological achievements. The pattern resembles receiving steppy-step -step instructions rather than gradual human trial and error. Ideas appeared simultaneously in multiple locations with different inventors independently developing identical solutions to complex problems. Consider how many fundamental discoveries happened within just a few decades of each other. Radio waves, X-rays, radioactivity, quantum theory, relativity, and atomic structure were all uncovered between 1880 and 1920. These weren't simple mechanical improvements. They represented completely new understandings of physical reality that required sophisticated mathematical frameworks. The mathematical knowledge alone should have taken centuries to develop. Calculus, advanced algebra, and complex physics principles suddenly became widespread among educated populations. Universities that taught basic arithmetic in 1700 were graduating students who understood electromagnetic theory by 1850. Modern computer technology follows the same accelerated pattern. Transistors were invented in 1947. Integrated circuits appeared in 1958. Microprocessors emerged in 1971. Personal computers became common by 1980. The internet connected the world by 1990. Smartphones put supercomputers in everyone's pocket by 2007. Each advancement built upon previous discoveries with remarkable efficiency. As if following a predetermined technological roadmap, but what if our rapid progress wasn't entirely the result of human genius and we've been receiving carefully timed guidance from observers who know exactly how technology should develop? Imagine advanced alien civilizations treating Earth exactly like we treat Yellowstone National Park, complete with strict rules against interfering with the wildlife inside. This is the zoo hypothesis proposed by radio astronomer John Ball in 1973 as a solution to the Fermi paradox. The theory suggests that intelligent life is abundant throughout the galaxy. But older civilizations have agreed to keep younger species like humanity in protected isolation while we develop naturally. Just as park rangers observe animals from a distance without direct contact, galactic civilizations might be watching us while maintaining strict non-inference protocols. The hypothesis solves multiple cosmic mysteries simultaneously. It explains why we haven't detected alien radio signals despite the mathematical certainty that advanced civilizations should exist. It accounts for the strange silence surrounding our planet while allowing for a galaxy teeming with intelligent life. Most importantly, it provides a logical reason why super-intelligent beings wouldn't immediately contact primitive species like ourselves. Consider how humans manage wildlife preserves on Earth. We establish protected zones where animals can live according to their natural behaviors without human interference. Rangers monitor animal populations, study their development, and carefully control outside influences that might disrupt natural processes. Visitors must follow strict guidelines about feeding, approaching, or interacting with the wildlife. The same principles would apply on a galactic scale. Earth becomes a planetary preserve where human civilization can evolve naturally without premature exposure to advanced technology or alien cultures. Galactic authorities monitor our progress while ensuring that more developed species don't accidentally contaminate our natural development process. This framework explains why alien contact might be deliberately delayed until we reach specific developmental milestones. 
Just as we don't introduce wild animals to complex human technology, galactic civilizations might wait until we demonstrate readiness for cosmic citizenship. Contact too early could disrupt our natural cultural evolution or create dangerous dependencies on alien assistance. The zoo hypothesis also accounts for occasional unexplained phenomena without requiring full disclosure. Park rangers occasionally need to intervene when animals face unusual threats or when research requires closer observation. Similarly, alien observers might sometimes interact with human civilization in limited ways while maintaining overall non-inference policies. Mathematical models support the possibility of galactic coordination on this scale. Game theory suggests that advanced civilizations would naturally develop agreements about handling primitive species since uncontrolled first contact could destabilize entire regions of space. A galaxy-wide consensus on protection protocols would benefit everyone by preventing dangerous cultural contamination. The timing makes perfect sense from a cosmic perspective. Human civilization is roughly 10,000 years old, making us cosmic infants compared to species that might have millions of years of development. We're approaching critical technological thresholds involving nuclear weapons, space travel, and artificial intelligence. These represent exactly the kinds of developmental stages that would trigger increased monitoring from protective observers. Physical evidence becomes more compelling when viewed through this framework. Unexplained aerial phenomena could represent routine monitoring activities. Ancient historical accounts of sky beings might record occasional research interventions.